Hi, and welcome to Podcasting 101 with Rachel. This podcast is for busy female entrepreneurs who run their own businesses and want to start a podcast or who may already have a podcast. I want to share practical information and tips on how you can get your podcast started and managing it along the way. I'll also be interviewing other female podcast hosts to give you real insight into what it's like having your own podcast. Hi everyone and welcome to the final episode of season two. I wanted this episode to come out at the end of 2023 but stuff happened, illness, busyness with my business, kids, life generally so I didn't get around to recording it. So I'm recording it now because I wanted to have a little look back in my year of podcasting and look back through 2023 and kind of do a little bit of a roundup of the year and and the season and season two. So I've been really pleased with season two. It's been really great. I've talked to some brilliant guests who have shared some fantastic knowledge about podcasting, which I hope has helped you move forward with your podcast or your podcast plans. You know, the aim of this podcast is to help you with your podcast, give you tips, advice, insights, arming you with knowledge and insights so that you can go ahead and, you know, put that and implement it into your podcast. So first I want to take like just a little bit of a roundup of all my guests from season two. So in no particular order, Sarah McDowell came on, well she came on twice. Sarah is my podcast partner in crime. We run the West Midlands podcast community together, which I'll talk about a little bit later. But she's been on twice, one time to share her SEO knowledge as she is the SEO manager at Captivate, which is a podcast host, one that I use and 100% recommend. She talked about some tips to make your podcast more discoverable really practical, actionable tips. So if that is what you're looking for, I would recommend you take a little look back at that episode. She also came on with Tasmin Sulman um, because they co-host the podcast SEO Mindset podcast, which is aimed at SEO professionals, but they talk about you know, more mindset things about what can happen. And and it applies to, you know, it's very interesting for everyone in different different professions as I've listened to it as well. And it's giving advice about wins and burnout and stress and mindset and things. So it's really, really valuable podcast there. But they gave us a lot of insight into what it's like when you start a podcast and both of them have Tasmin and Sarah have a job so that it's not, the podcast is not part of the business like my podcast is part of my own business but they do it as like they both just love podcasting and they do it on on the side if you will as a, as a side hustle so you know that itself brings different challenges and nuances to it you know that's interesting to hear how they manage that and how they uh, manage their time and things like that. Kendall Brightman came on and she is the community manager at Riverside.fm. Riverside.fm, for those of you that don't know, is a podcast recording software studio. I'm using it right now to record this episode, but she handles the community side of things where so she connects with lots of different creatives for the platform so she gave us some great tips on interviewing and how to talk to your guests to make them feel more at ease those are great tips there Ashley Freighter who is a coach she came on and talked to us about well she kind of gave us double (laughs) for her so she she actually had a podcast herself about burnout so she talked to us a little bit about how she managed that podcast and you know a great observation of Ashley's is that she because the type of podcast that it is and the sensitive subject that you're talking about, that it actually took quite a lot out of her. So that when she was recording and planning it in, that she, you know, as an observation for if she recorded another season of the podcast, is that she would allow herself more time to record these things and recover afterwards. And this is something that, you know, should be taken into consideration depending on the the subjects of your podcast if it's something that you know that could drain you it's you know you're offering advice and they're talking about often about difficult things it can drain you so those are the types of things to think about when you're starting your podcast so that you allow yourself the time 
in your planning to be able to to get those recorded and recover as well as well as doing the rest of everything else that you're doing your life work kids family whatever she also gave us some great tips about productivity and how we can view our own productivity and, and what makes us feel productive and some little tips there to help us when we are feeling like we haven't achieved very much about what we wanted to do. Ida came on the podcast to talk about procrastination tips. She, her business is a anti-procrastination playground and she runs courses and things to help people overcome that procrastination that you that you feel when you have big projects coming up and things like that so she gave us some great tips and advice to help overcome those things Emma Fishlock from Real World Consultancy. Emma came on to talk about authenticity in your podcast and creating your Um, And the importance of creating your content and your podcast towards your target audience so that, I mean, that is so important is to make your content, you know, as relevant as possible to you, to you, the listener, you know, one of the kind of biggest stats that came out of a talk that I looked, that I went to see at the podcast show in 2023 was that, you know, one thing that helps or, you know, drives people to listen again to podcasts is that the fact that they are relevant and that you are talking to them so that, you know, and which is obviously, hopefully, what I'm achieving here is that, you know, when you're listening to my podcast, that you're feeling that this information, the tips and advice and the guests that I'm sharing with you are relevant to your problem, the thing that you need to get solved. And we had Hilary Salzman come on talking about storytelling and the importance of that within your podcast. And we hear about storytelling all the time within our marketing, you know, creating that brand story, using storytelling to let everybody know who we are and and what we do and what we stand for. And she has a great podcast that is a daily podcast. Like it's, it's about five minutes long. It's the Everyday Storyteller. And and I love Hillary's aim here was you listen to this her five minute podcast when you're making a cup of tea in the morning. It's every every weekday and she, you know, is giving you a different tip or advice to think about in relation to storytelling for your business, for your podcast. So definitely if you've not had to listen to well, any of these really so far, then, you know, hop back and, and have a listen. I also, last but not least, talked to Helen Calvert. As I've said many times before, I absolutely love Helen's podcast, The No Bullshit Guide to a Happier Life. Uh, I've listened to all of her episodes so far. She's just started to release episodes for season four, uh, which I haven't checked out yet, but I will most certainly be doing so. I talked to her back in season one and, you know, her podcast has moved forward another year since then. So we kind of discussed how you know, things have developed over the three seasons, how the podcast supports her business, because she also runs a coaching business. And how, you know, how her clients and listeners help support the podcast in the way that what, you know, the themes and things that she's seeing in her clients, you know, realizing that those things are going to be coming up for her podcast listeners too. And then listening to, you know, feedback from people that are listening and, you know, really using that to create the episodes that she knows that people want to hear. And that again, like we were talking about target audience, that's so important. So, you know, that's been really beneficial for Helen and her podcast for Helen and and for myself you know the podcast is part of your business it's not a separate entity it's you know it all feeds into one so I think that's really great that you know taking that time to listen to your audience and to your clients and you know incorporate those ideas and themes into your podcast we also had a little chat about reviews and how hard it actually is to leave a review so I mean I'm not an Apple user but I know that I think on Apple it's fairly easy to leave a review you can you know you go through the app and you can click on leave a review and you can leave a five star you know rating but for the other apps it's not so easy there's Podbean app actually you can leave a comment on the episode there but I feel like 
I'm not sure. I mean, I have used the app a few times. I, I find it quite busy, to be honest, and a bit hard to use. But that is just me. But that is one way you can leave you know, a comment or review on an episode. One great thing I think that Spotify has done recently is they have, again, like same as Podbean, is leave a, you can leave a comment on the episode, which is really great feature because previously you could not leave, I could not figure out, I mean, if someone else did, I would absolutely love to know (laughs) where you left a review on Spotify. I know you could follow, I know you could leave a star rating once you've listened to some episodes. So great. But if Spotify is the main app where your listeners are, you know, if it's not making it very easy for them to get in touch with you, to engage with you, you know, this added feature of like, you can ask a question, you can, it's like a generic one, or you can ask specific questions. You can create polls, people can leave voice notes for you, which I think is absolutely brilliant. So that is, so just a little tip there is to, to leave, to make it as easy as possible, you know, let your listeners know, kind of like I am now, you know, this is where you can get in touch with me or, you know, leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on the episode. Have you got any follow-up questions? Anything like that. So I think that that's a really great addition to Spotify. I also use the website Podchaser uh, as review to encourage people to leave me a review. You can go on there and claim your podcast and then you get kind of a profile there and then you can share that link. That is the link that I usually share in my show notes is is to Podchaser. So I've had a couple of reviews through there and people can rate it. So you can obviously do that for any other podcast. So you just go in there and claim your podcast um, and then you can share that link there. So that's quite a nice one, you know, an easy way to leave a link to say, just click here to, to leave a review. So I really hope that the guests that I had on in season two have you know, helped you with your podcast, their advice and tips. I would really love to know, you know, how they've helped you if, if they have and, and how you've been able to implement that in your planning or or in your in your current podcast. You can email me or hit me up on LinkedIn. I would just love to know, you know, <laughs> love to get some feedback from you guys. So what else happened for me in 2023? So I, as I mentioned earlier, I started a community with Sarah McDowell. It's called the West Midlands Podcast Group. We started it because, well, we met at an event in the end of December 2022. And we just kind of nerded out about podcasts and thought it would be really nice to kind of have a local podcast group. So originally, Sarah lives in Worcester. I live in Bromsgrove. So we don't live very far from each other at all. So originally, the idea was nice to have something local of people where you could go and meet face to face as well. But I think that we all making it easier. It is easy to meet up virtually. We can't always meet up face to face. So every four weeks, every second Thursday of the month, we meet virtually. So you don't have to be in the West Midlands to join the club. You can be from anywhere in the world. If you like, we have people from Canada and we have people from all over the UK. So, you know, people can join virtually, but we also do local events. We've, we've held two so far. We did a meetup in Worcester at the Dice Box, which was a game cafe, <laughs> which was really fun. Played some some new games. The guys there at the cafe are really good at recommending stuff for you, for your group, what kind of things you like. Um, and one of the games, I think it's called Sounds Fishy, is one that I actually bought myself and have played with my kids and my family over Christmas. And it was so much fun. So it was really nice just getting out there and meeting, you know, local podcasters. And although... There are so many different podcasts that people are hosting. So we have Miriam Cunliffe, who hosts Mims Moments, where she goes out into her community and talks to lots of different people about what they're doing, their business, their, you know, there's, she talks to a guy around Christmas about his Christmas tree business. And they're just really lovely local stories. And there's another member called Andrew Martin. He runs the 
hosts the Family Histories podcast, which is in, I think it's just finished its sixth season, which is all about, you know, tracing your family history. So his guests come on and they talk about their love for genealogy and searching at family histories and how they got into it. And they talk about their own family tree. They talk about maybe a, a particular person in their tree. And they also talk about a kind of brick wall they've come up against and I really this podcast is so interesting if you like history then I would definitely check out Andrew's podcast it's very entertaining at the end there's like a time machine thing which is really really good so also there is a lady called D who is the host of the diary of a kidney warrior podcast and she has kidney disease and she has well she's done over 100 episodes now she recorded a live episode for her 100th episode which was really really cool and she talks about all different things related to kidney disease talks to other kidney warriors that have been through the been through different parts of dialysis different parts of the dealing with the disease and things like that it's so very interesting Dee's story is so fascinating as well and she it is really I'm trying to think of the word she's just so brave and all the people that she speaks to are just you know have so much to deal with but their outlook is so fantastic as well but I, I'm trying to say like All these different podcasts, you know, I may not have come across these because there are, there are a lot of, as we all know, there are a lot of podcasts out there and I'm not sure about you, but I always feel like I find it very difficult to search for podcasts within the different apps. I feel like discoverability is an issue and that trying to find certain podcasts is quite difficult, but, and, you know, I wouldn't possibly necessarily go and you know, go and search for some of these topics, but they're just, it's so great to meet so many different podcasters. We all come together over our love of podcasting and what we're trying to do, who, you know, people that we're trying to reach and being able to come together as a community, share tips and advice. We, we've had some great sessions And we also feature guests, guest speakers for our virtual sessions. So we've had Nick Redman, who is a voiceover artist and coach, also a podcast host. But she came in and gave us some like warm up exercises to how to warm your voice up to feel more confident in going forward and speaking. We've had Hannah McCormick, my friend, collaborator, client, who's come on sharing her awesome marketing tips. She's also featured been on two or three three times I think on the on this podcast as well sharing her marketing tips sharing her story about podcasting showing at solo podcast helping solopreneurs with their marketing and we've had who else oh Jack Chambers Ward came on and how to be a better podcast host that was really interesting I took a lot away from that talk so if you are looking for a community um you know, we would, it's a free community. Uh, We would love you to come along and, you know, come and meet us. Even if you're not started your podcast, you started your podcast, everybody at different stages of podcasting are welcome. And, you know, come along and meet everybody. We chat in between the meetups on our Slack channel. So we can get advice there. We share tips and advice and different tools and things like that. So yeah, if you if you fancy joining or you think you might want to join in on the fun, then I'll pop a link. There'll be a link in the show notes where you can join and and find out all the details there. As I said earlier, you know, this podcast is is linked to my business. I'm a podcast manager. I help support women in business, mainly coaches with their podcasts. I help them get them started. I edit them, write show notes, create digital marketing materials like audiograms, video clips, emails, social media posts, graphics, all those kind of things. I help people plan out their podcasts, keep accountable, offer advice around getting your intro and outro recorded and a trailer for your podcast, promotional strategies, those kind of things. So, when I created this podcast, I wanted it to support my business and also offer that tips and advice to other women in business, just like me, who I know, you know, not everyone can afford to outsource your podcast. I, 
you know, I don't outsource my podcast. I do all of this podcast myself. I plan it. I record it. I edit it. I do all the things. And I wanted to be able to give, you know, a resource out to people, to women in business that can help them for free to move on with their podcast if they wanted. So, you know, my podcast helps support my business in the way that when I speak to different women, when I go out networking, when I when people get in touch with me about podcasting, I know there's always something that I can offer them that can help that can help that doesn't, you know, that doesn't cost them anything. So that is, you know, one of my biggest aims with this podcast is just to help basically. (laughs) I have had growth with my podcast this year, which I'm really, really proud of. I originally, I mean, I know not a lot of people talk about numbers and that's one thing that is always, I'm always curious about with different people's podcasts is, you know, how, you know, just how many listens do you have? How many downloads can you have? I mean, you know, I've read lots of different articles about what downloads are good. I've done an episode about what does success look like for you. And it is hard not to get caught up in the numbers because, you know, when when you're thinking, oh, only only two people have listened or only this many people have listened, you know, it can be a little bit disheartening. And I have felt that too. But I feel like for me, I mean, obviously, it would be totally awesome for my podcast to go charting and be number one and, and, you know, and have all those wonderful stats to to shout about. But for me, if one person tells me that my podcast has helped me, for me, that makes my day. And that, for me, is success. I've managed to succeed in helping you. That is what the aim of my podcast is. But I definitely have seen growth in my listens. I, you know, at the end of 2022 with my business, I kind of decided that I really needed to do more networking, build a community, build, you know, a group of people that I speak to and chat with. And because I was kind of posting and ghosting, hiding behind social media in terms of my business and wondering why, why is no one talking to me? Because I'm not talking to them you know, so I made a real effort and did lots of networking. And, you know, I'll be honest, networking is quite tiring, It is quite tiring being, you know, being sociable all the time. But I really, really enjoyed myself this last year, meeting lots of awesome women who have all different kinds of businesses, have all different kinds of stories. And it's just been such an eye opener. And I think that, well, I did anyway, when I started my business, it was like, oh, networking, you have to go and, you know, speak, quote unquote, professionally, you have to portray yourself in a certain way that isn't necessarily you. And I think that a lot, and anyway, a lot of the business owners that I've spoken to, you know, all felt that way about networking. It's like, oh, it's super salesy, it's really icky and all of that. But I definitely... It, it's not like that. And it has changed. I mean, maybe it's like that in some circles for some professions, but definitely in the online space and the networking groups that I'm part of. I'm part of the WIBN, which is awesome. I've been to some and what's great there is that you're part of a national group. So you can kind of passport into other groups, which is really, really cool. I'm also part of the socially shared network that Andrea Rainsford introduced me to. Karen Heap, is uh, I think that's her network so she she runs the Tamworth group now I think that that I've been going to because that's kind of like one of the closest ones for me and because I've been going out and speaking to people and people you know now know that I'm a podcast manager that I'm I do podcasting and I also have my own podcast that has definitely helped more people listen to my podcast because that is the one thing that I know I can direct people to is that you know, I'd love to start a podcast. I really would love to start a podcast. I've got some episodes on that. Listen to this. This will help you. So in terms of networking, that has directly, you know, impacted upon the growth of my podcast. So for example, at the point of recording on the 10th of January, so I have had, in the last 28 days, I've had 88 listens, which is up 47%. This is what my stats are telling me. In the last 90 days, I've had 320 listens, which is up 181%. And 
in the last seven days, I've had 76 listens and that is up 2,433%, if that can even be a thing. <laughs> and, you know, these, these, I was not getting these kind of stats the other year. If you're just looking at, just looking at the numbers, especially since a new episode hasn't been released since the 12th of December, because I definitely used to notice a drop. So when I didn't release a new episode, because since I started the podcast, I've had breaks, I've had, you know, I've stopped because of, you know, things going on in my personal life. And I'm very much for, you know, if you need to take a break, take a break. Doesn't matter whether it's, you know, quote unquote mid season or anything like that. You have to make your podcast work for you and for your business. Same goes for the rest of your marketing. You know, we all know that when we are maybe super busy, we have something going on our personal lives and we don't post as much on social media. You just physically can't give anymore. And the same goes for your podcast. I think as long as, you know, you just let your audience know whether you've got them on an email list or, you know, you post on social media, you know, I'm taking a little break. I need this. It's absolutely fine. It's You can just repurpose episodes that you've had out before, which is fine. And I really feel like those are kind of working uh, for me now for my podcast. It's so important to repurpose them because you think I have like 50 odd episodes and, you know, want it's not once they're out, that's it. You know, you don't talk about them ever again. This, all that information is still relevant to your listeners and everything. So, you know, really repurpose and use the content that you have already created that is gold dust for your business. And that is what I do um, every other week because my podcast episodes come out every other week and I, you know, bring up an episode that's relevant for the audience, you know, for you guys, for people that are in my in my world and and share that. So that kind of strategy has been working for me as well. So one, I guess, piece of advice, if you'd like to <laughs> take it, is, you know, get out there in your community, find your tribe, as everybody says, and, you know, tell people about your podcast, tell them, tell everybody about your podcast and how it can help them, how it can help transform them and their business. So looking to 2024, I've started planning for season three of this podcast. It will not be out until March. I'm planning a eight episode series. And part of that will be, well, two episodes I'm dedicating to your questions. So one of my clients, Hannah McCormick, she did a Q&A episode for her podcast and it worked really well. And having that kind of engagement and feedback from you, the listener, is really, really important. And as I said before, I want to make this podcast as relevant as possible to you, as helpful as possible to you. So I would love to hear your burning podcast questions, the challenges that you're coming up against. They can be specific, totally specific to you. That is absolutely fine. I'm going to pop a little link in the show notes in the or the description. So you will find it's just a little form and it's just got like, three questions on there. So it's like, what are your biggest challenges? Have you got any of the questions? And have you started your podcast? It can be anonymous. It's not for marketing for me to market to you about. It is literally just for me to get this market research, you know, into so I can make, you know, two episodes answering your questions. You can pop your name on there if you like, and I will give you a shout out if I'm using your question in the episode, or you can leave that blank. That's totally up to you. But I really, really, really would love your feedback on this. And I appreciate everybody's feedback that they will send. And I appreciate you listening to this podcast. I as you know, or what I hope you know, that I'm very pas passionate about podcasting and I am passionate about helping other women in business get their podcast started and managing it along the way, helping them move forward and, you know, just making it the best it can be. So with that, I'm going to end the episode there. Thank you so much for listening. I wish you all the best for 2024. If you are stuck with your podcast, there are a few other ways in which I can help. You can click on the link to join the West Midlands podcast community, uh, a free community where you can come and join and speak to other podcasters, get tips and advice there. Uh, you can book in a 30 minute free podcast consultation where I can give you personalized advice for your podcast. So if you have you know, you want me to answer a specific question or a challenge or something like that, then please feel free to book in 30 minutes with me. 
And as I said earlier, I am a podcast manager and I do have clients where I help with their podcast editing, uploading, all the production elements to get your podcast out there. So if you are interested in outsourcing your podcast or wanting some support in starting your podcast, then please get in touch. You can book a call there and we can have a chat about how I can best support you. Thanks so much for listening. Take care. Bye. Thanks for listening to the show. If you'd like to connect with me or get in touch, then head on over to my website. If you liked the episode, then I'd love it if you could leave me a review in your chosen podcast app. Your feedback is much appreciated. See you next time.